In today's video, we are taking a closer look at the Presa Canario and the Cane Corso, two excellent working breeds that are both widely known for their power and presence. Now, if you do a quick Google search, you'll often be told that there's a pretty big gap between these two breeds when it comes to bite force. Online figures and PSI charts tend to place one clearly above the other. But our own bite force testing here on the channel has told a very different story. When you look at real data that we have collected using our custom built bite force sleeve with calibrated sensing equipment, these two breeds are actually much closer than most people think. So today, we're going to break it all down properly. We'll be comparing our top three strongest Presa Canarios against our top three strongest Cane Corsos, looking at peak bite force, average bite force, and consistency to find out which breed really delivers the most effective bite. No hype, no internet myths, just real dogs, real data, and a proper comparison. Let's get into it. So first, we're taking a look at Donny, the Presser Canario. And before we talk about peak numbers, tiers, or ceilings, there's one statistic that defines Donny more than anything else. Volume. Donny recorded 41 separate spikes over 100 kilograms. 41. That means 41 individual bite events where the force exceeded 100 kilograms. That isn't a single moment of adrenaline and it isn't a lucky bite. That is repeated output across the duration of the test. Now, Donny's highest peak is 152 kilograms, which is extremely powerful by any standard. But what makes Donny stand out isn't that single number. It's the fact that he crosses the 100 kilogram mark again and again. This is not a dog that relies on one explosive moment. This is a dog that applies pressure consistently. And when we look deeper into the data, Donny enters the 130 kilogram tier seven times, the 140 kilogram th tier three times, and even reaches the 150 kilogram tier once. These aren't low level readings. These are meaningful high output bites delivered repeatedly over the test. And what Donny does not do, however, is enter the very highest tiers. He does not reach 160 kg or beyond. And that isn't a weakness. It's a defining characteristic. Donny's performance isn't built around chasing extreme peaks. It's built around reliability and endurance. In simple terms, Donny behaves like an engine, not a single explosive strike, but a steady and relentless output of power over time. That tells us about bite stamina, recovery between engagements, and how the dog performs across the full duration of the test, not just in one moment. So as a benchmark contender, Donny sets a very high bar. Any dog that wants to be considered superior overall doesn't just need one big bite. It needs to match or exceed 41 separate spikes over 100 kilograms. And that is not easy to do. Next up, we move on to Rage, another presser canario. And this is where the profile starts to change. Rage recorded 22 separate spikes over 100 kilograms, which immediately tells us this is still a high output dog. While the spike count is lower than Donnie's, it's still significant volume and shows that Rage is capable of delivering serious bite force repeatedly throughout the test. Now where Rage separates himself is at the top end. Rage reaches a peak bite force of 177 kilograms, which is the highest peak recorded among the Presser Canarios tested. That single number already puts Rage into a different conversation. But this isn't just about one big hit. When we break down Rage's data, we see that he enters the 130 kilogram tier 10 times, the 140 kilogram tier seven times, the 150 kilogram tier five times, and the 160 kilogram tier three times. 
those higher tiers aren't accidental. They're repeated. And that is where Rage's profile becomes clear. Compared to Donnie's endurance-focused performance, Rage looks like the presser that's pushing the upper limits of the breed. He doesn't match Donnie for total volume, but he consistently reaches higher tiers more often. And that tells us something important about how Rage expresses his power. This is a dog that still delivers repeatable output, but with a greater emphasis on peak intensity. Rage bridges the gap between stamina and ceiling in a way that other pressers don't quite match. At the same time, Rage still shows a limit. Even with those high tier entries, he does not break into the extreme ranges beyond 177 kilograms. And again, that is not a flaw. It defines the boundary of the Presser Canario's bite performance as we've measured it so far. So if Donny represents sustained pressure, Rage represents the upper edge of Presser power. He's the dog that shows how high the breed can climb while still maintaining control and repeatability. And with Rage setting that ceiling, the next question becomes obvious. What does the Presser Canario look like when power and consistency are balanced? Now we come to Betty, the third Presser Canario. And this is where the picture starts to balance out. Betty recorded 20 separate spikes over 100 kilograms, which places her just behind Rage in terms of volume. Now that immediately tells us that this is still a serious high output dog capable of repeatedly delivering meaningful bite force throughout the test. Betty's highest peak comes in at 157 kilograms. That's lower than Rage's peak, but comfortably within elite territory. It shows that Betty is capable of producing strong authoritative bites without relying on extreme spikes. And when we look deeper into the tier breakdown, Betty enters the 130 kilogram tier seven times, the 140 kilogram tier four times, and the 150 kilogram tier twice. And what stands out here is consistency. Betty repeatedly occupies the mid to high tiers without sharp drop-offs or sudden spikes. Unlike Donny, Betty doesn't dominate on sheer volume, and unlike Rage, she doesn't push the upper ceiling of the breed. Instead, her performance sits right in the middle, steady, controlled, and reliable. And this tells us a lot about how Betty delivers power. She isn't built around endurance alone, and she isn't chasing peak numbers. She represents a balanced bite profile where consistency and control are the defining traits. And that balance matters, because in real world performance, not every dog needs to sit at the extremes. A dog that can reliably deliver strong bite force again and again without relying on a single high risk peak has a profile that's both predictable and effective. So when we look at the Presser Canarios as a group, Betty completes the picture. Donnie shows us sustained pressure, Rage shows us the upper limits of power, and Betty shows us what happens when consistency sits between the two. Together, they define the Presser Canario's bite profile, strong volume, solid peaks, and a visible ceiling. And with that picture established, we're ready to see how it compares when we move across to the Cane Corsos. Now we move on to Bronson, the Cane Corso. And this is where the data takes a sharp turn. Bronson recorded 28 separate spikes over 100 kilograms. While that's fewer than Donny, it's still strong volume and immediately tells us that this is not a one hit dog. Bronson is capable of producing serious bite force repeatedly across the test. But where Bronson truly separates himself is at the top end. Bronson reaches a peak bite force of 207 kilograms. That is the highest number recorded in this entire comparison. And crucially, it isn't an isolated moment. When we break Bronson's data down into tiers, the scale becomes very clear. He enters the 130 kilogram tier 16 times, the 140 kilogram tier 11 times, the 150 kilogram tier nine times, and the 160 kilogram tier four times. He also enters the 180 kilogram tier once and the 200 kilogram tier once. This is what a higher ceiling looks like. Not just one massive bite, but repeated access to tiers that the Presser Canarios really touch. And in some cases, never really enter at all. Bronson doesn't just peak higher, he lives higher. 
And that tells us something fundamental about how this dog delivers power. Bronson isn't built around endurance alone, and he isn't simply chasing a single extreme. He combines strong volume with an exceptionally high ceiling, allowing him to repeatedly enter the upper tiers while still maintaining output. Where the Presser Canario showed a clear ceiling, Bronson pushes beyond it. And this is the first dog in this comparison to break into the 180 kilogram range, and the only one to cross the 200 kilograms. That places him in a category of his own. In simple terms, Bronson behaves like a hammer, not because he only hits once, but because when he does hit, the force delivered sits at a level that fundamentally changes the scale of the comparison. And with Bronson setting that benchmark, the next question becomes obvious. How do the other Cane Corsos compare when measured against this level of ceiling and tier access? And that's where Blue comes in. And this is where control and moderation come into focus. Blue recorded 15 separate spikes over 100 kilograms. That's a lower volume than both Bronson and the Presser Canarios, but it's still enough to show repeatable output and consistent engagement across the test. Blue's highest peak comes in at 162 kilograms. That single number already tells us something very important. Even without chasing extreme peaks like Bronson, Blue still enters the 160 kilogram tier, a range that remains rare for the Presser Canarios. And when we break Blue's performance down, we see that he enters the 130 kilogram tier twice, the 140 kilogram tier once, the 150 kilogram tier once, and the 160 kilogram tier once. Now these aren't frequent entries, but they are meaningful. What Blue represents is a more controlled Cane Corso profile. He doesn't live in the extreme upper tiers, but he doesn't rely on overwhelming volume. Instead, he demonstrates the breed's ability to access high tiers without pushing to the limits every time. And this matters because it shows that the Cane Corso's higher ceiling isn't limited to outliers like Bronson. Even a more moderate performer like Blue is capable of reaching levels of bite force that sit above the Presser Canario's typical range. Blue's data helps anchor the comparison. It shows that the Cane Corso's power profile isn't just about two extremes. It's about having access to higher tiers as part of the breed's baseline capability. So while Blue doesn't dominate the table, he reinforces the broader pattern. Cane Corsos may not always match the presses for volume, but even their more controlled performers can operate in ranges that shift the ceiling upward. And with Blue establishing that baseline, we're left with one final Cane Corso to examine. And his profile is very different again. Now we come to Bolo, the final Cane Corso. And his data needs to be read a little differently. Bolo's test duration was short, which means we can't judge him fairly on volume alone. He recorded five separate spikes over 100 kilograms. And on the surface, that looks low compared to the other dogs in the comparison. But those five spikes tell a much bigger story. Bolo's highest peak comes in at 164 kilograms, placing him firmly inside the 160 kilogram tier. Now that alone is significant, especially given the limited time window. When we break his data down into tiers, Bolo enters the 130 kilogram tier three times, the 140 kilogram tier twice, the 150 kilogram tier twice, and the 160 kilogram tier once. There's no gradual build up here. He accesses the higher tiers almost immediately. This tells us something important about how Bolo delivers power. He doesn't need time to warm up into higher ranges. His bite force ramps up quickly and reaches elite levels without relying on extended duration. Because of that, Bolo has to be judged on intensity rather than endurance. His profile isn't about sustained output over time. It's about how much force he can generate when he commits. Even with a small sample size, the quality of those spikes is undeniable. Bolo shows immediate access to tiers that many dogs never reach at all. So while Bolo doesn't compete on volume, he reinforces the same pattern we see with the Cane Corsos as a whole. This is a breed capable of producing high tier bite force, even in short engagements. With Bolo's data now on the table, 
the full range of Cane Corso performance from Bronson's extreme ceiling to Blue's controlled power to Bolo's explosive intensity. And now with all six dogs laid out, we can finally bring the entire comparison together. So now that we've looked at all six dogs individually, we can finally step back and look at the bigger picture. When we combine the data from the three presser canarios, Donnie, Rage and Betty, the first thing that stands out is volume. Across those three dogs, the Presser Canarios recorded a combined 83 separate spikes over 100 kilograms. That is 83 individual bite events exceeding the 100 kilogram mark. And that number matters because it shows just how often the Presser Canario is able to produce serious bite force. As a group, they cross that threshold more frequently and more consistently which points directly to endurance and sustained pressure as a defining trait. Now, when we look at the Cane Corsos, Bronson, Blue and Bolo combined, the picture shifts slightly. Together, the Cane Corsos recorded 48 spikes over 100 kilograms. Now that's still a substantial number and it shows that the Cane Corso is absolutely capable of repeatable output. But compared directly, the Presser Canarios produce significantly more total spikes above the 100 kilogram mark. So in terms of pure volume, the edge clearly goes to the Presser Canario. Where the Cane Corso begins to pull ahead is at the top end. When we look at the peak values and tier penetration, the Cane Corsos dominate the higher ranges. They enter the 150, 160, 180, and even 200 kilogram tiers more often with Bronson setting the highest peak in the entire comparison. So when we step back and compare the breeds as a whole, the pattern becomes very clear. The Presser Canario edges ahead on volume, producing more spikes over 100 kilograms across the group. The Cane Corso edges ahead on ceiling, producing higher maximum bite forces and more frequent entries into the extreme upper tiers. If you've enjoyed this kind of detailed, data-driven bite force breakdown, let me know in the comments. Breaking the numbers down this way takes more time, but it gives a much clearer picture of what these dogs can actually do. And if you'd like to see this same level of analysis applied to other breeds, drop a comment and tell me which ones you want to see tested next. The more data we collect, the more accurate these comparisons become. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next one.